Welcome everyone. It's Jenkins Governance Meeting. This is the 31st of October, 2022. Uh, thanks for being here. And topics on the agenda that I've got action items, elections, uh, CDF topics, if Oleg joins us, Antler 2 to Antler 4 progress report by Basel, and forum and community topics by Gavin. And Gavin, I put a couple of items in there uh, that if you're not comfortable with them, I can talk to them as well. Anything else that needs to go on the agenda? Sounds good to me. Okay, then let's let's run with it. So this Wednesday, two days two days from now, we're expecting the release of two point three sixty one point three, and then we're I guess another item here is LTS baseline selection for the next for the next LTS is not yet complete so we're late on that one and there are discussions ongoing in the in the developer in the developer mailing list uh, choosing between 2.375 or possibly even 376 or a much older version uh, discussions ongoing any other news items that should be highlighted Uh, okay. Oh, Gavin. Yes. No, well, there's more community stuff. But the Twitter uh, RSS thingy, the releases RSS is now live again. Oh. So what was the fix there? That's great. Congratulations. Fixed by, by the infra team or? Yeah. We found a tool that we can run ourselves that takes in an RSS feed and spits out Twitter posts which I'm thinking may want to be used on the blog as well. Yeah. Nice. And does it does it do open graph images as well? How what's the It literally just has the title of the post and the link to the post. Oh, okay. Good. I think uh Herb made changes to make it more customizable so we could probably do more stuff, but essentially yeah, it doesn't actually like create a nice card or anything it just does the link and the link has open graph excellent okay thank you thanks to everybody very good any other news items and the newsletter because i don't think i just found out it was a thing a couple weeks ago and i think it's really cool i don't uh, yeah can you give is. some more background on that assembled by Alyssa, right yep you're right yeah, I don't know anything else about it other than it existed and it was neat. I don't know if I even read it yet. I don't know where to find it and I forgot about it till now. Oh, if you want the link, I can send it, of course. And it's supposed to be out the first week of each month. So definitely we have to work on that this week. Uh, there's still a, your part, I think, Mark. Uh, <laughs> you have some things. It, yes, but it's called like this meeting, you know, Jenkins Governance. So I think you could fill it in after the meeting. Right. You should so, probably get it put on Jenkins.io slash newsletter or something very short, easy to remember. Mm -hmm. I thought she was publishing community.jenkins.io. Is that not where it's going, Bruno? No, it's going as a blog post in uh, Jenkins.io. Ah, okay. Oh, good. Okay. Damn. Uh, put in the chat the link to the document if you want to edit it. Thank you. All right. Is that that's not that's the draft for the next newsletter? It's a continuous document, you know. So there is a previous newsletter, and then we have the draft for the one which is about to come. Yeah. And I'm supposed to transform that into a NASCAR doc document and then make a pull request on Jenkins on GitHub mm -hmm. Jenkins.io. You know. Um, for the sake of when we post this, we should also get the actual link to the last one so that someone can go view the last one somewhere. Good. Yeah, thank you. Okay. For the for the blog post. Very good. 
any other item. So I can, and I think I can find it even now if we've got just a minute. If it was posted as a blog post, it's easy yeah. to find. So, ah, yes, here it is. Good. Okay. So Final. Slash tag slash newsletter. There. All right. Well, that's the one, but it's probably better to link to the tag. Oh, oh, right. Because there is. Oh, is there a tag? I don't know. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, let me update the thing for you. Keep going. Okay, great. <laughs> Thanks. Hello, Oleg. Any other news items? Not for me. Okay. Next topic then, action items. Am I audible? Oh, yeah. Yes, Oleg, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, it was me. And any any other items in the news section, Oleg? Well, yeah, probably uh, KubeCon. So yeah, for KubeCon, uh, yeah, there was a CDF summit there. One of key highlights is uh, that there was a major uh, press release uh, by the Continuous Delivery Foundation. Uh, so key points of this release, Tikton graduation, uh, Pierce um, joining uh, the CDF and also CD events uh, 0.1 release. So from the community standpoint, uh, one of the important items is CD events because yeah, we have cloud events plugin and maybe it makes sense to actually update. Maybe I will be spending some time in the coming months for that. Uh, unexpectedly, I got a bit more time than I planned. Uh, but yeah, um, so yeah, and the last is PRC adoption. So basically, what is important for the ecosystem? So I can bet that uh, JFrog will be uh, updating the Artifactory plugin to support PRC2 and probably a few, a few more patches. So stay tuned for turbulence. Uh, but yeah. Now, and you had mentioned one that I missed, or like there was uh, a no, new member. Uh, so it's a uh, pitch set two times. So you uh, you missed it in the beginning, so I repeated it later. Ah, so it's okay. Three main news. Okay, so Piercy is now a member of the CDF. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's okay. an incubating project. As a, a project of the CDF, right. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. Great. Yeah, so I guess that's all about the news. Thank you. All right. Any news from others before we go on? Okay, next topic then, action items. Uh, three, we've got community Jenkins.io for the docs mailing list. No progress, but I'm back from vacation, so there's a better chance of progress than there was two weeks ago. Easy CLA. Oleg, anything you want to share there? Not really, but this will be definitely my next uh, item. Great. Okay. And then we had an open question. Gavin reminded reminded me that we've had questions, several questions come in in various places in the community about multiple um, application servers like Tomcat or WebSphere or um, Glassfish or you, you name it. And right now we have, as far as we can tell, no core developers who are actively using Tomcat or, or, or other web containers other than the web container that we ship on our own. And so the thought was, should we create a support page similar to the Windows support page and Linux support pages that we have now, which says tier one support is the Windstone container. Tier mm -hmm. two is things that we'll accept patches for, but we don't promise will work. Um, and then tier three unsupported is things that the provider of the container does not support. Uh, there is some complications uh, with that because uh, if we talk about the web containers that are Java based, their behavior significantly depends on the version of Java you run. 
So, mm -hmm. for example, when we were releasing uh, Java 11 support for Jenkins, uh, we did some testing for Apache Tomcat, uh, I believe, and uh, for Wildfly. Um, so this is what uh, we've tested. But uh, just to be clear, uh, even acceptance test harness framework is not really that great uh, for capturing issues there. So yeah. potentially you can uh, use a certain test harness framework or PCT or, or customer work packager test if any of them left, launch uh, with um, another web container and see what's going on. But we have exactly zero test automation in our existing pipelines for that. So I would uh, rather ask hard question for the recent Java versions is do we want to support anything beyond uh, uh, JT for let's say Java 17 and above valid question and I think I think I'm biased toward the answer being no but that's that seems like that's the same class of of no as other other Linux variants that we don't test and validate it's it's a platform where would we reject a pull request that proposed to fix something on behalf of one of these web containers we don't test? I suspect in the average case we would not reject it, but we're not testing it for sure. Yeah. So and uh, yeah. So how much of an issue that could be? Well, I I would rather just call in the community and ask if anyone wants this support and ready to step up and maintain that there because has been a lot of chatter about tomcat and i think wild Pl wild ply on the forums the last month or so a lot of people having issues some going back a lot longer than that so it's if you know if that's like a a slice of what people are actually using then i think enough people using it to make a fuss but i don't know who would be maintaining it yeah, so that's what i like this idea is where we say uh windstone is level one anything we can set up automated testing for is level two we could put a note saying we have no automated testing we just could and anything we won't support or test at all you know it's proprietary or expend cost money or something is level three and I don't even think we need a giant uh, chart for that. We could just literally say, you know, we only test with Windstone or something like that, and that could be good enough. Right. Because right now it's very hard for me to say on the forums, could we like, yep, we don't support Tomcat, good luck. Because you were like, well, what are the workarounds? We're like, we don't support Tomcat, good luck. Well, it's not good luck. We support it for Java 11. If you want to go with Java 17. There's uh, still a lot of the, issues with Tomcat um, recent versions. Yeah, so this is why I'm very consistent about uh, supporting that. It's basically a kind of worms, all kinds of library compatibility, because we still have libraries uh, which are in Jenkins runtime and which are in Tomcat runtime, and they're set different. So for Java 11, it was kind of pain but uh, well at least the, the project was updating at the same time to support java 11 though we get behind jenkins but now so my vote even risk it my vote is to update the system requirements page and say we only uh regularly test with windstone anything else is community supported and is best effort by community members or something like that just because I want someone to be able to point to say, you know, at one point, because at one point Tomcat was used quite heavily, maybe not recommended, but used quite heavily. And then when that changed, there was no, there's nothing really to point at to say, hey, look, we don't, we don't have the people anymore to test this. Yeah. So Oleg, does that, I guess, we, I think that's a good, for me, that's a good proposal to say what we test, right? That may not be a, that may not be f as definitive as the support page, but saying what we test is a good way of being open about the reality of what we are testing and what we aren't. 
Well, we did basically the same for the things like Windows up, uh, Internet Explorer, well, Windows browser, even Java, I believe, Java distributions. Uh, but yeah, historically, what we supported was what uh, some of uh, the vendors uh, used to distribute uh, with. So basically, the vendors uh, which were distributing Jenkins and we were willing to uh, commit the resources to maintain these particular platforms and support. Uh, in the community, we basically uh, floated along with uh, this policy, which makes total sense, because if there is nobody ready to support it, then okay. Uh, but yeah, so if we want to do the same for web containers, I'm perfectly fine. Uh, the biggest problem would be some of deployments, because um, yeah. No, it's hard to run uh, Jenkins in corporate environments uh, if a particular web container is mandated. So let's see. Yeah, but given the given yeah, the, uh, no, no. main takeaway of this speech probably and detour, but yeah, I'm fine with it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, Internet Explorer. um non-support statement it's well actually the let me let's how about as a as a draft let me propose a a pull request and we can use that for a discussion because i think it's worthwhile for us to have that discussion and just see hey what are the what are the concerns or the issues i do really like uh, oleg's sentence about uh oh god now can i remember it um we we only we only maintain the one web container, but vendors are welcome to step up and support other containers if, if they use it for commercial purposes or something like that. Because you know, I think we want to clear on like I think we want to put heavy push and nudges on people to contribute. I, I've liked Mark's mm -hmm. comments about like getting very aggressive with people. Like if you want to use TFS. Your company should donate resources because we're not fixing it. You know, so same sort of thing. I think we should be really heavy handed about saying we only support the one because we only have so many people. And anything more than that, we're expecting vendors, maintainers, poor. Good. Yes, I like that. Okay. Anything else on the application server support matrix topic? Yeah, I wanted to mention about um, Tomcat. The only specific thing that I know that we once supported that we no longer support is running two different Jenkins controllers in the same Tomcat process. But that is a clear example of something that we used to support that we no longer do. However, I am not aware of any other case where something used to work and no longer works. Um, there was you know, an example where people were configuring their Jenkins home inside of Tomcat a certain way, and we dropped support for that in favor of a Java argument. Um, but once you use the Java argument, you can still do what you were doing before. So. Um, yeah, they're able to, to do what they need to do. Um, some of the links that I've seen about people having trouble with other web containers seems to be user error in the sense of some people are trying to use the Jenkins war file with a web container that is using the Jakarta imports rather than the Java X imports. Um, and so that's that's just a matter of using the wrong version of the servlet container. Um, we don't have any documentation for this because it's not supported, but this could be a good way for people who are interested in contributing to start um, by just documenting, okay, if you wanna use Tomcat, it has to be this version because that's the version that's compatible with our servlet API version, et cetera. Yeah, and this, this goes a long way in, in starting in that direction where we actually say, hey, you know, if you want more support, start adding it, you know, because we, mm. I, I didn't know any of that stuff. And I think that is really the answer to a lot of the questions that came up, especially the Java home stuff that people were, or not Java, Jenkins home 
stuff that people are struggling with. I just didn't know that was a change. So I think documentation would go a long way, but that isn't documentation that any of us could provide if we're not actively using that server yeah. container. But yeah. it would be great to have contributions from people who are using it. And documentation will be a great place to start, I think, because it, I think for the most part, it should be doable. Um, if you pick the right version, if you configure the home directory the right way, it should be possible to use Jenkins on just about any servlet container. Like I said, with that one exception of, we don't want, we no longer support multiple Jenkins controllers in one, in one Tomcat instance. Um, so that's really the only, that's really the only thing that we actually just don't support. And that's, that's fairly intentional. So yeah, that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks very much. Any other topics, anything, any other points on application server support? Nope. Okay. Next topic then is elections. So the blog post has been has been made made visible. It's available. It came out on the twentieth, uh, talking about the phases of the election, etc. Voter registration has started and will continue for another two and a half weeks. Then voting and res then followed by re results announcement. Uh, Gavin and Evelina are both on the board up for re-election. All officers, so infra, doc, security, uh, et cetera, are all up for re-election events. And there's a link that Gavin, you had included to Damien's proposal. I assume that the blog post superseded the proposal. That wasn't my uh, link. I don't know where it came from. Okay, all right, good. So I can just delete that then. Thanks. It happened to be in the notes and I wasn't sure of its source. Any any topics there on elections, hotspots? I was thinking about it. Uh, do we want to, I mean, I know when Mark came on board, and to some degree, when I came on board, there was some transition issues. We're trying to figure out where and how and what to do. Um, do you think there's any point in and and where would be writing up some sort of like make sure someone or uh, board members have access to the the board mail list and have a min access there and expensify and I don't know what else. Good. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Access to mailing lists, Expensify. Um, uh, the, the two GitHub groups, the Infra and the, C and the CI board groups. I don't know what else we actually do, but it might be worth writing this down. One right. password. Yeah. But then there's things for offices as well, like make sure that such and such access is given. And Yeah, the Infra officer and the security officer in particular have access to lots of very sensitive stuff and it's probably a good idea. Let's capture that. I hope we persuade both of them to be nominated, the current officer to be nominated again, but but one way or the other, it's healthy for us to describe what are the things that we need to be sure they, they have access. Well, they don't get any say if they're nominated. Anyone can nominate anyone. Right, you're right, sorry, that's correct. I hope they will accept the nomination that I made Good point. Anything else on elections? Okay. Next topic then was CDF topics. Oleg, anything that you wanted to share there? Well, not really. So yeah, there will be a governing board meeting um, in the middle of November. It was moved due to some uh, reasons for Cube, uh, cube COVID. Uh, but uh, yeah, the rest uh, is okay. So no clear follow-ups now. Um, yeah, I do have some private news, but I will share it uh, with the team later. Uh, but yeah, basically that's it. Great. All right. Thank you. Next yeah, topic. and also uh, since we are, since I see most on below, no news uh, on uh, LFX things. Need the chat, no, um, uh, baby. The um, oh. the the signing thingy. Oh, oh, yeah. 
So for LFX community, which is also a baby backend, um, there is some time for us to decide whether we move out or not as a foundation. So I guess the deadline would be January or February. So new board issue. So I, I oh, like I'm not sure I'm understanding the the LX of LFX community topic. Do you want to give uh, more it's detail? Or... Bevy. So we, oh, uh, bevy. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Bit. Right. Uh, so there should be little to no impact on Jenkins. Yes, I created a chapter there. We tried to host a, a few webinars. So basically, hit the wall with some of the issues because of the pricing plan. And uh, taking the limitations, we discovered uh, it barely makes sense to proceed there. Okay. Um, yeah. And yeah, there is no solution uh, for chats or Twitter replacements uh, for offered by the Linux Foundation. That is a point that Bruno brought up later, further down. Yeah, that's this Mastodon thing. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> um, because I was going to say, like, the same thing with Matrix is they're all designed to be self-hosted. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the issues is namespaces. So, like, we getting a Mastodon account is easy. You can get it on any of the number of thousands and thousands of servers. But I'm wondering if uh, Linux Foundation has any intention of running a CDF or Linux Foundation Mastodon for their projects. It's a relatively easy thing to set up. Uh, for self-hosted or for SaaS? Uh, it wouldn't be a SaaS per se. It's like, it would be a Twitter type thing, right? Yeah, so it's basically distributed uh, Twitter. Yeah. So everyone uh, hosts their own location and uh, there is just uh, uh, whatever central re registry. Yeah, so something like... Uh, you know, Jenkins at linuxfoundation.io makes a lot, or Linux, I don't know what the domain is, makes a lot more sense than, you know, uh, Linux at Mastodon chat, you yeah. know. Uh, okay. Yeah. So for us, it's basically the question of how we host it, uh, what is the price of this hosting? In principle, I'm not against uh, Mastodon for sure. It, it, it's a... Uh... Mastodon itself is a Rails app, so it needs a database and a web server. It's a pretty tiny little ask, um, but it also brings up the whole like uh, matrix issue. Uh, I was going to go make up a, um, a space, which is a like a, a collection of rooms in matrix, and someone's already claimed uh, Jenkins at matrix.io. So then I'm going to, I will go to harass them when the time comes to actually try to get it back. But it's just thinking that, you know, this might be one of those things where it'd be nicer to have official naming of things and Jenkins at Linux Foundation would be a lot nicer than Jenkins at Matrix. Yeah, or Jenkins at CD Foundation. Dot, uh, you know, you write yeah. some. So that's all I'm bringing up is this might be things like they're relatively small things that uh, I'm sure even the element team could host matrix one or, you know, uh, Linux Foundation could easily spin up a VPS with Mastodon on it. It's pretty easy to launch. Um, so just things that we should probably bring up at some point. Okay. Launching is easy, operating isn't. <laughs> yes. I mean, if you want to launch a service at the Linux Foundation scale, you definitely need some uh, time commitment from the foundation. Yeah. yeah. Right. But like well, if, if the Mastodon one was only for uh, Linux Foundation projects and not users, then it would be a lot smaller scale. But yeah, it's, it's not something I'm going to bring up. I was just okay. thinking as you're talking about it. Yeah, arguably there would be no difference from community to Jenkins.io then. Um, I mean, right. no practical difference. Right. We could even run one, yeah. Right. Okay. Any other CDF topics? Then let's go on to Antler 2 to Antler 4 progress report. Basil. Yeah, so in the last two weeks, um, 
Alex Earl and I have been co-authoring a change to complete this task, and it was merged yesterday towards this weekly release. With that, we came close to ticket and declare success on this task. That's about all I have. Um, yeah, one question about uh, so the threat and the budgeting request. Taking this pull request, where do we stand there? Do we want to proceed with the budget request or do we put it on hold? Well, the task is complete, so. Okay. Yeah, so budget budget request is is no longer needed, right? Because, because we believe the transition is complete. Now the the next, unless unless the next LTS chooses 2.376, it will be another three months before before this happens. But this was not a particularly crucial thing for the for the Java 11 or Java 17, right, Basil? Uh, it's for it's 18. for next Java releases. Okay. All right. Anything else on the Antler 2 to Antler 4 progress? Thanks, Basil, very much for doing that. And special thanks to Alex Earl for doing it. That's fine. All right. Next topic then was forums and community topics. Gavin. Yeah. Um... So I'm just looking at the notes because I don't have any of the forms that have been really support heavy the last uh, couple of months. Um, so there's not really anything interesting to bring up. Um, so yeah, Hacktober Fest, Fest is today. Um, I really like the the stats that JM, JMM has been posting. It's really kind of cool how many people are doing, you know, their first PRs ever with Jenkins. I don't know where I last saw it. I think every channel just listed there mm -hmm. or Hacktober channel. Um, yeah, but it's still a large percentage of people who have uh, never submitted to open source before have done a lot of work in Jenkins. So that's really nice to see. Um, so I guess it's mostly uh, because of Hacktoberfest or do you see uh, uh, large scale contributors joining? Uh, JM, JM's stats are really only about Hacktoberfest, so things that have been labeled Hacktoberfest and things that happened this month. So I don't know if there's a technically a distinction. I think any PR in a repo that's labeled Hacktoberfest is considered that. So. Yeah, so as far as I understand the, the Hacktoberfest rules, it's eligible for Hacktoberfest counting if the repository is has the topic Hacktoberfest or the pull request has the label Hacktoberfest or Hacktoberfest accepted. And so yeah. uh, many of our repositories are, are have the topic Hacktoberfest. And so all all submissions to those repositories count. Yeah, it's, it's definitely more than probably truth, you know, because people are submitting things that are not part of the program, but it's still good numbers for, for the month. Yeah, I was I was really pleased with this. This, to Oleg, to your question, this graph that's maintained by the Linux Foundation for us shows a nice boost of from about 640 in at the end of September to over 700 at the end of October as their count of contributing developers to the Jenkins repositories in total. Now, I think that number is actually quite a bit lower than John Mark's number. I think he sees on the order of 100 uh, independent de developers that he could see with submitting Hacktoberfest submissions, but their numbers say at least 60 of those are are new and had never may have never contributed before. So oh. it, it's encouraging. Yeah, so he last posted on Wednesday, I found it. Uh, it was 535 eligible uh, uh, for Hacktoberfest by 111 different contributors. Um, among those. That's uh, great. Among those 535 PRs are Hacktoberfest complete. Merged or flagged is accepted. They were submitted by 89 contributors with 35 qualifying for swag just from the Jenkins contribute contributions.
which I assume is just there are 35 people who submitted four with Django. exactly that's so they did four four plus poll requests that were accepted or yeah that were accepted as eligible great that's really cool Super, thanks. I had put this number in just because I've been interested in pipeline graph view. Gavin and I have had conversations about blue ocean and pleased to see that some months it's gone up by a hundred installations per month. Uh, and it's done that for the last several, last two or three months done very nicely. So pipeline graph view plugin gives us hope that uh, blue ocean is not the only way to visualize pipelines in in Jenkins. It, it, it's working great for me and it's running on ci.jenkins.io. Um, it, it's quicker than Blue Ocean. It renders very well. Nice feel. I've actually been thinking I might submit a PR to it to add uh, uh, notifications um, so that you could you could like uh, have a checkbox on the bottom of the page that says notify me when this build is is done or like per build or even per project. Mm. because that was one of the ones I have for one of my old plugins that I don't necessarily want to maintain and it'd be nicer to add it to this thing. Mm. Cool. All right. Now, next topic then was raised by Bruno. Bruno, you'd ask, should we get a Mastodon account for Jenkins? Yes, because this has been also craze on Twitter these days with uh, um, purchase of uh, oh. Twitter. Lots of people I follow are going on Mastodon. And so I did that also today. I'm not leaving Twitter, but I have Mastodon account just in case. And I also experienced the um, cross-posting. You know, I just set up something with a website that cross-posts whenever I tweet something, it goes then on Mastodon. So I was just wondering if it was too early or just a silly idea to move Jenkins, not to move, but to have a Mastodon account for Jenkins. Yeah, I've been doing that for years, the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. I'm thinking as action items for this, uh, someone, either someone from the board or someone from infra to talk to um, one of the Mastodon hosts about maybe getting a sponsored install for Jenkins. Um, which I also think we should probably do for Matrix as well. Hmm. Good, okay. So, Gavin, you want me to put that on you as an action item? Do you I want can it? do it. I just don't know if it should be Damien who does it. Ah, I see. Right. Valid point. Okay. So that's it's it makes sense. It's either you or Damien. Yes. So I think we can assign that to Gavin or Damien and then make a decision on who does okay, it. Okay, good. All right. Gavin or Damien. Good. Okay. And then can you do the same for matrix as well? Oh, yes, I sure can. You bet. All right. And then we don't have namespace issues. We can have, you know, we can have a newsletter at, Mat at Mastodon. We can have releases at Mastodon. We don't have to worry about trying to claim namespaces early that way. So I'm going to move this as soon as you're done writing. Good. Okay. Oh, I'm in the wrong place, aren't I? There. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So I just did a quick Google search and there are post solutions for both. So I think it's worth reaching out. Um, I don't know if we want to pay big money for them, but even if it's a small monthly cost that we might be able to float out a budget. Good. All right. Any other topics on forums and any other items on forums and community topics? Uh, the new hosting crew is doing really well. I brought it up last meeting, but uh, Alex B is, is just owning this and answering all the hosting requests. And both Alex's are improving the process quite a bit, updating documentation, upgrading the IRC bot, 
um, it's a lot smoother than when Tim and I were doing it part time. So. Great, thank you. Okay, so thanks to both of them. Any other topics? Uh, the only other things I was going to point out uh, were things I mentioned in the newsletter, but, uh, and I don't remember if I mentioned last week, but accounts.jenkins.io has gotten not only a facelift, but a, a cleanup. So it should be a little bit more reliable. Um, I think we're going to just uh, put in the newsletter more about the facelift itself, but uh, I think short of email, I think we could probably make email more reliable too. And that should probably, because we've been putting it off because we thought we were switching to the other service that I can't remember the name of, and that doesn't seem to ever happen. So it might be worth just fixing up accounts now. So between Tim, Alex, and myself, we got it deployed by, you know, Docker container, CI, Tim did a lot of it, but CI, um, the UI is fixed. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I've I've got to show it. I'm I'm so pleased. Thank you very much for what you did. It's notice what's going to appear at the top. Notice how there's a top bar on that thing. And it, footer. it's like the rest of the site. And, and oh, no, footer? that's the old footer. I got to fix that. Oh, OK. I, I, I confess I was truly delighted to see this because accounts.jenkins.io was this long long-term thing oh we're never going to be done with it thank yeah. you very very much wiki.jenkins.io has the same thing now too right right well although i like wiki.jenkins.io because of what it what it shows as the uh as the top level let's see if i can find one sample page oh the one that uh it, it shows it yeah. shows this one this content is deprecated and it shows jenkinstein yeah Yeah, I think we're going to go into more details on the on the newsletter, but it's worth mentioning. Great, thank you. Any other topics? Uh, general, thank you to everyone who's been stepping up on the community uh, pages. Um, I know Alex and Bruno have been helping out quite a bit. I've slowly slowed down. I get exhausted by answering all the support tickets and I'd love to see everyone else step up and I can step in once in a while instead of burn myself out answering things. So yeah, by the way, Gavin, uh, where are you uh, the one who created the template to answer the same question we got yeah. regularly? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. I think I, I think I crowdsourced it early on, but yeah. Um, that being said, it did just change. So it might be worth uh, at the end of the video showing that off mm -hmm. because we can make it easier for people to submit changes and ideas and posts and stuff. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Anything else, Gavin? No. But if we're when we're done, I'm going to get you to demo real quick. Oh, good. Well, so you, do you want to go ahead and do that now? Do you want to do it on the recorded session or yeah. do it after? Yeah, on the recorded session. All right. Um, well, I think we're done then. Cool. Can you go to community.jenkins.io and uh -huh. go to uh, categories? So community.jenkins.io and categories. Yeah. So I don't know where they put it because I don't use this view, but uh, so, you know, like, um, they added a new templates category and put all the templates in there. So instead of it being like hidden in deep in menus. OK. Probably be at the bottom. Yeah. Templates. Ah, OK. So any, any top level post in this form. So all uh, five of those are considered canon responses. Um, you can reply to them so people can actually. Uh, it's open to right now. This category is open to anyone. We can lock it down or open it up. But you can reply to them and say, hey, can we change this, that kind of thing. Uh, we can actually give, it's all category management, so it's now easier to give out access to people who can post new ones or edit old ones, that kind of thing. It used to be this really hacky, groupy thing. Uh, we could probably delete that one, the last one. 
Uh, yeah, well, but no one's <laughs> using it. So yeah, that's. Yeah. Oh. But it should be a lot easier to add more of them now. Um, Cause I know, uh, I think Mark made the Linux transition one, which is very nice. Mm -hmm. It was just easy for us to just do it. Um, but yeah, so this is very easy for people to add more to. And I encourage people to add more to because it, at some point it's getting frustrating to answer the exact same questions over and over again. So, well, and and I find this no valid crumb is a, a very common common occurrence in saying, "Hey, go do this," and it' nice. Yeah. So I didn't make that one. I don't know who did, but I'm very happy they did. All right. So, or wait, no, maybe I did. I haven't yet used any one of them, uh, so it's just a copy paste. Or it's, uh, it's easier than that. Mark, do you want to go to reply to something? Sure. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's go look at let's take one. Um anything. You well, don't have to actually reply. Just hit the reply button. If I hit the reply button here and then there's this the little, little gear gear. And then there's insert template. Insert oh, template. Okay. And now it's Ooh. oh and, and they have tags now. Oh, that's cool. Oh, oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, and I can literally filter. Literally, this was a week, a couple of days, seven days ago, according to the. You can pick one, and then there's a button on the right that says paste, and it'll paste in, it'll properly fill out. And uh, now it shows the preview, it yeah. inserted. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah, they're nice and easy. It's a really good, nice feature of Discourse. Um, if you hit close market, it'll ask you to. Leave yeah, it, it, and yeah. I'm going to discard. We don't want to yeah. give that answer there. Yep. Yeah. So I okay. encourage people to submit more of them. Um, I don't know currently who has access to write to that category, but it's very easy to change if someone has, wants access to it. So. Yeah, that, thank you. And if I get time to come to an advocacy meeting, I'll do the same discussion then, if it happens to me in the middle of my day, so. Cool. Thank okay. you. categories for of the category for of the templates category that's the way to describe yeah. it or canned and responses or using it for canned responses yeah nice very nice any other topics we need to cover before we end today nope sound good all right thanks everybody